In 1967, Charles Katz was illegally gambling over numerous amounts of payphones. The FBI followed Katz in order to see which payphones he was using to deliver information regarding certain winning numbers and other useful information for gambling. Unfortunately for Katz, the Federal Bureau of Investigation caught on to his activities in February 1965 and moved quickly to collect evidence. They narrowed it down to three payphones throughout Los Angeles. The FBI tapped all three payphones with hidden electronic recording devices. With the evidence caught on the recordings, they were able to prove that he was gambling illegally. He was arrested and charged, placing bets for interstate gamblers and keeping a share of the winnings. However, interstate gambling was illegal under federal law, so to avoid detention in prison, he used public telephone booths along Sunset Boulevard to conduct his business. On October 17, 1967, Charles Katz's trial began. Two months later, on December 18, 1967, the District Court for the Southern District Court of California held a ruling of an eight-count indictment for the illegal transmission of wagering information from Los Angeles to Boston and Miami. Katz tried to challenge his conviction, saying that the recordings were illegal because the FBI had no warrant. Therefore, they shouldn't have been admitted as evidence in the case against him. The Court of Appeal rejected his challenge and said that no rights were violated because there was no sign of actual physical intrusion. He was granted certiorari, a writ or order by which a higher court reviews the decision of a lower court. Katz wanted to figure out whether a public telephone booth is a constitutionally protected area, so if evidence obtained by attaching an electronic listening recording device to the top of that booth is obtained in violation of the right to the privacy of the user of the booth the Supreme Court had agreed to take Katz's case. Their seven one rule was that the government's eavesdropping activities violated the privacy upon which petitioner justifiably relied while using the telephone booth and thus constituted a search and seizure within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment governs not to only seizure of tangible items, but extends as well to the recording of oral statement, such as Silverman versus United States. Because of the Fourth Amendment protects people rather than places, its reach cannot turn on the presence or absence of a physical intrusion into any given enclosure. The trespass doctrine of Olmstead versus United States and Goldman versus United States, although The surveillance in this case may have been so narrowly circumscribed that it could have been constitutionally have been authorized in advance. It was not in fact conducted pursuant into the warrant procedure, which is constitutionally precondition of such electronic surveillance. Writing for the majority, Justice Stewart wrote, One who occupies a telephone booth shuts the door behind him and pays the toll that permits him to place a call is surely entitled to assume that the words he utters into the mouthpiece will not be broadcast into the world. The Southern District Court's decision was reversed. Created using Powtoon.